is our new unit that's just come in. Um, I don't know if anyone's actually used it. Have you used it? Okay. Um, we have a waiting rod for it as well. well this is actually the one from our older unit. We've actually got a new unit um, waiting rod coming shortly. check with this waiting rod is this um, base on here, make sure it's tight, um, the screw sometimes comes out and has fallen off and we've had to get, actually get a new base made on it. Um, so that's waiting rod um, and sensor here fits onto the rod. Screws up. Okay. Now this has got uh, three little um, sensors on it that will uh, detect your flow uh, right through there and do all the calibrations. Now it's got a, an arrow on here um, that shows the, the direction of your flow, so always have that bulb going into the flow. Don't put it that way; you won't get it. Reading um, this unit, just keep on your shoulder. Quite a simple unit. Um, on button, off button, and um, you can do you can save to this unit. I think it saves about 10 different um, measurements, um, and you can do that with your recall and store buttons here. Um, at the moment, it won't give us a reading. There's no flow. Uh, it shows uh, a bar that comes up along the top of it, and that will read. And you can actually adjust the amount of time that it will do your readings as well. Um, everything you need to know about them. We've got little sheets made up for them. Um, the other unit is currently away still. Um, but we do have a spare one on loan from Niwa. Um, on here, you've got your depths at uh, 20%, 60%, 80%, and yeah, it's got a total depth there as well. Um, so you've got set sensors that require depths, journal machine, place put onto the stream bed. Uh, it's pretty simple, really. Um, <coughs> Anything you'd like to know about? What's the um, range? Sort of velocity mm -hmm. range? How high? How low? Electric? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm uh, sorry. It'll get down to about 0 0.01 of a meter per second. Um, at that sort of velocity, you're probably likely to be getting eddies and things like that. So you've got to be careful. At really low flows, it's not going to be accurate. I haven't met another flow range that hasn't done yet, so in that case, if, if it's above that range, you probably shouldn't be in the stream anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the idea with this, though, is that typically for most streams, which are up to about, or say, two feet depth, you can get away with uh, taking the mean flow measurement at 60%, uh, yeah, 60% from the bottom. Uh, is usually a good good mean flow, uh, and then so you, ideally you divide, take measurement across the stream width, divide that into five or ten measurements depending on the stream size, take a reading at each uh, point across the stream, whether it be five or ten readings, and you've got your flow for each for each point, and then you've got the um, measurement across the stream, and then you can take an average flow measurement for the entire stream. Uh, for streams that are above that one or two foot, you want to start taking measurements at uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.6, depending on 0.8, yeah, and then calculate from that. Sorry. Take good care of the Yeah, make sure you um, you keep it nice and clean, and um, air it out once you've used it. Let it dry out, and again, keep the water the unit out of this unit out of the water. Um, 
know, if you, you're working in the rain, try and keep a, a coat or a bag or something over top of it to, just to protect it. So, how much battery life is uh, Yeah, there is a little battery icon that comes up in the corner of it as well. Batteries uh, just have to get up under here. I think it takes two C, C cell batteries. So we have that flow meter. We also have a pygmy flow meter. Now we've got two of these um, units and they have a little prop on them. Now these here have to be filled with um, just normal tap water and there's a little screw in here. Now this this box here has got a little screwdriver and it's got a little Allen key. Um, the Allen key is just usually into the foam there. Now the screwdriver here, just undo that screw here, it's got a little o-ring on it. Um, you put the tap water inside there, fill it all the way up and make sure you get any air bubbles out of it. Um, then you can attach your impeller. And that's got a little grub screw on it. Don't take that grub screw right the way out. Um, you drop that, you lose it, you won't find it at all really in a bit of grass. Um, it doesn't need to come all the way out. So once you've got your water in there and you've got your little impeller on, you can unscrew this here and slide your rod, waiting rod through that hole and then just tighten it back up again. Just locks into place. Then you put your nose cone back on, screw that on, just make sure that you don't cross thread it. So then you can just deploy that into the direction of your flow and this rod will extend quite a long way out. Record you on here. It's got a little dial, and you can you can actually wind it back to zero if you like, or just record the number that you start on, and then time it for. Um, I usually time for about 60 seconds um, at each step, and then you can just work out your, your flow rates through there. Um, once you've finished, well, you've also got a low flow um, vein as well, so for low velocity in streams. Once you're finished, just make sure you clean it all, um, take everything apart and undo that screw and actually take the water out. Now we've got a couple of syringes in here, one to, you can put the water, just squirt that water into that hole, and one here with an actual needle in it, um, which you can suck the water out of it. Um, just make sure it's dried out once you're finished with it. So it's just a counter? Yeah, it just does. does um, and, you, and you time it? Sorry? And you time it? Yep. So how, what do you do about the amount of times it goes around while yep. you're finding your depth for it? <laughs> that's, that's um, mm -hmm. well, like your depth, um, you have like a depth sounder or a portable depth sounder. You can get your depth or you can just record your depth of your, like with a, um, a CD disc, something like that. Um, and flow rates, uh, worked out <coughs> through the through the manual here, and I'm not sure of the, the actual units that you use. What they're optimally designed for is, I don't know if you've seen it, but Jim's got this big um, ichthyoplankton net which you tie behind the boat, 
So what you can do is get these pygmy meters and suspend them at the entrance to, to the uh, net. And as you tie it behind the boat, the propeller goes along, and you can get a quantitative measurement of how much flow there is through that net. But I mean, that, that propeller starts spinning as soon as you put it into water. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but if you turn it, turn it on the side on, it won't spin. So that, that's there more, more for of boats and getting out. Well, you can use it either way. Use for streams. Um, we've used it for Michael's work, just in, in low flow areas, you know, easily accessible, just a bit of wading. Um, or Melanie Gidler's work, just off the side of the boat, inside arms. I've used it down in Conrad's big flume. You know, running fish down there, I found it surprisingly accurate. Uh, so long as you leave it. Uh, the time period, so you want a good 60 second measurement uh, to <coughs> cut down any fluctuations, then yeah, it is surprisingly accurate. And I think at low speeds it can be just as accurate as the Martian. Yeah. Um, What's the minimum depth you would use for each of those? What's that? The minimum depth, like how shallow would you go? Well, you're, like, you're limited by the power yeah. size. Yeah. Anyway. So, but what would you say? Like how much should, how much water should be over the propeller for it to still get an accurate reading? Uh, 15 centimeters. Because what, what happens is when you get it too close to the chip side of the channel, you can see using this.